Yeah. Yeah, Niklas Hed, very welcome. Thank you. It's awesome to have you all here. Here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Niklas is the founder of the Rovio of Rovio, and that's the company who gave the world the game Angry Birds. And so I, I must say that during this journey Niklas has seen it all he's also a board member I know in some startups so Niklas tell a little bit about your backstory yeah I've uh, before we go to to, to Rovio uh, I always loved games uh, uh, I used to play too much and and my mom <laughs> used to tell me or ask me that when do you stop playing those stupid games and I was like uh, never I'm never gonna quit playing those <laughs> uh, but because of that, I always knew that uh, one way or the other, I'm going to join the games business industry. And uh, uh, I was actually studying in Helsinki University of Technology and we had a school project. And because of my passion for, for games, uh, that project then, uh, like, we took that out, out from the school and established uh, the company called Relude. So it was the, like, the okay. free name of, of Rovio and uh, uh, and we've always been focusing in, in mobile games. Why? Because uh, we had a small team, so it's, it was pretty easy to create games uh, for those platforms compared to PC and console games. You, you needed to have like 50 to, to 100 uh, people teams to be able to create those games. And, but then the second thing was also that we knew right from the beginning that this industry is going to be like big it's gonna be massive because you can carry your devices in, in your pocket but back in 2003 when the company was established uh, there weren't no uh, like smartphones so there were feature phones and we saw that that the color displays they were kind of like uh, emerging to the market and and those combinations that that you could actually even put colors in games uh, in your pocket, uh, plus then you, you have the internet connection, so you were able to like connect with other people. And I, I remember when I was playing our first game, which was actually a real-time multiplayer game. So the first game was a real-time multiplayer game, which right, is right from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, right from the beginning, and, and probably that was the the first real-time multiplayer game on mobile devices. And I was playing the game uh, at my parents' porch. Uh, it was a sunny, sunny summer day, and I was playing against my friend. And at that point, it, it, it struck me that, oh my God, if people could actually experience the same that I was experiencing. So you're able to connect people. I don't have any wires, so it's, it's, it's fully uh, like portable, and I was able to play games. And I knew that the market is, is going to be huge. It's going to be so big. And I definitely want to be part of that. Uh, and then uh, in, the, in the beginning, uh, we didn't know how to make money. What are the distribution channels? And at, at that time, uh, operators, they were, they were basically dominating the distribution and, and, and selling the games. And it was actually really, really difficult for the, for the players to play the games, to even install them, even to discover them. Yeah. Uh, and then during those uh, like first six years, uh, we were struggling. We were struggling, struggling big time. Six years. Six years. Yeah, just like banging our heads to a wall, and uh, we had like two times that we ne nearly killed ourselves because the business was. Okay. Up. But then in the background, we had the the dream to be part of the kind of like the big trend, but it was kind of like. It, it, it was way, way slower than, than we uh, anticipated in the, in the beginning. And, uh, and then finally iPhone was released. Uh, and my first thought of that was that uh, it's a great device. It's an amazing device, but will they make it? Can they actually expand it to a uh, like bigger trend? Yeah. And then... Uh, 2009, beginning of 2009, we realized that actually they they might have a chance uh, chance to do it. Okay. And and it wasn't obvious at that time. And and then we like during those six years, uh, we developed 
uh, more than 50 games. More than uh, 50 games. More, more than, yeah, more, more than 50 games. Not all of those were released. So a lot of prototypes, a lot of like different things. But how I saw kind of like retrospectively those times that it was kind of like calibrating our minds how to make red games. And then uh, when we saw iPhone, we, we decided to make a clear strategy that how we're going to tackle it because we've been <laughs> screwing up <laughs> for those <laughs> past six years. So how do, we, how do we actually take the next step? How, do we, how can we be part of the, that me mega trend? That is how many, Niklas, how many were you during those times? How many people were involved? Only, only 12 people at that time. Well, yeah. But and how did, you, how did you live? I mean, if you didn't have the commercial success, how did you finance it? Well, that was part of the, the, the strategy thinking that we, we, we looked at the, the opportunity, which was yeah. quite clear. Uh, and then we looked at the how are we going to finance it? And also looking at the, the weaknesses that, that we had. Uh, so we had to be very honest with ourselves. We, so we had to took the, take the, the mirror from the pocket yeah. and look, look into that. And that side wasn't uh, that pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then like deciding what to do of, for, for those, those things step by step, uh, we were able to solve them one by one. And for the, for the Angry Birds game, uh, we had a, like a set of requirements. Basically, they were more about how we shouldn't do it. Okay. And how we should do it. And then you should use your... That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was basically that don't do it this way, don't do, do it that way. Because we had, the, had a project for uh, Nokia phones. So we, we did a game that was pre-installed in those devices. And, and they asked us that, could you support 50, uh, sorry, 67 languages? And, and we were kind of like desperate to get the money in and we were saying that, yeah, yeah no worries. <laughs> and when we get to, to the Arabic language, uh, which is like super, super complex, uh, I, I almost shot myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but eventually we were able, able, able to do it. And that was actually one of the parameters that we, want, we don't want to use any like words in the game because then if we can avoid <laughs> to have it translated then we will like save a lot of effort and, and time yeah and then then uh like like so many different parameters uh and then uh, we just use our intuition to to kind of like make the i don't know uh the best guess for that platform that could be very very successful yeah uh and many other, other, other things as well on, on top of that. Uh, so you had a kind of reverse strategy also, what you should not do. So you had very much focus on that. Yeah, how to avoid those things and how to actually solve those. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you make a great experience with those limitations? Yeah, and then when you, when you finally, I remember you telling the story how you very deliberately chose a certain type of game and, and it was so deliberately parameters there and then that was a world success so tell about the angry birds of that decision making yeah there as, as i mentioned there were a lot of different parameters uh yeah. one was that when you start playing the game we don't have want to have any tutorials so it needs to be so intuitive that when you pick it up you will instantly get it and that was the reason that we picked and why we loved physics-based games, because those rules are from this world. You don't have to explain if you drop a, an, an object, how it would act. But then how to get that in balance, that it feels that it's from this, this world, that took a lot of time. And our designer, Jaco Isalo, he was so, I don't know, persistent uh, of, kind of like balancing that. Okay. And that balance is actually the magic in it. How the, I remember you told me that there was deep, that it should work for all ages in all all uh, countries and all, yes. all uh, environments. And yeah, and that was actually a uh, another uh, project that we did for Nokia. So they they were segmenting their target audience very carefully. And and when I read those like segmentation descriptions, uh, I, I was always confused. Perhaps I'm <laughs> slow, <laughs> but uh, because of that, we wanted to make it like differently. And also when, when it's designed and catered for 
a bigger audience, then we can actually be part of the mega trend as well. So it's interesting that you went uh, against all the beliefs that you should uh, that segment your customers, that you took one big segment suits, suits for everybody, and you succeeded. Yeah. And I would say that, that game... It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And, and games from that perspective, they are very universal. So you don't have to do like careful segmentation. Of course, you, you can do it. Uh, well, I don't know. We, we saw that. How, why do we limit ourselves? For that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Niklas, um, this problem with too many ideas in the beginning. Yeah. I know that you have been thinking on that quite much, so how to search the direction of the company. I think this question is very, very interesting. So I know you have a lot of thinking behind here. Can you open up that? Yeah. I, I think it's a very traditional uh, challenge that you have. Either you have too few uh, like ideas how to take it forward. But I would say, at, at, at least for us, it's, it's typically just the opposite, that we have too many like, things on the table, too many different opportunities, too many different venues uh, to that's follow. A, that's for all, all, all merging companies, that's a problem. Yeah. Too many good ideas. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, you, then you kind of, I, I think what, how I typically feel is that I don't want to pick a thing because I'm not sure if that's the right one. Yeah, but then you need to calm down. You need to stop for a while and and kind of analyze it. Analyze it like thoroughly. What is the most important thing? What is the thing that if you don't do, the likelihood of you not succeeding is increasing. And how how to find it? Uh, uh, I really loved the discussions and and the techniques that you have how to drill down what is the most important thing. Yeah, and actually, number one thing, what is the most important number in business? It's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be the number one, to focus on one thing. And <laughs> yeah. And of course, it doesn't uh, happen all the time, but uh, at least that, that should be the aim. Uh, and how to drill down into the most simplified version of your strategy and i would say that that also applies to games as well it's i think it's easy to do complex games <laughs> but, but to make a simple like working game that's the most difficult thing it's like uh, apple's user interface when they uh, like introduced yeah. iphone for the first time those things they weren't like obvious when you when you use it it feels obvious that ah this is the how you should do it but how they came to those conclusions, I, like hours and hours of uh, like, like, like designs spent yeah. on it. And Steve Jobs was very, very hard there. He, he, people said that they, he hit us with the simple stick, that this is not simple enough. Why two buttons when there can be one? <laughs> yeah, and of course it's, uh, it's getting more complex because you have like new features, but when the industry was kind of young uh, yeah. it was easier to do like simplifying things and i would say that the same applies to games as well that in the in the beginning they should be very simple so when you start playing the game it should be very simple that, that you understand it and then you can make it more complicated yeah niklas you were also head of the r d department there yeah. it was called the level one because it was level 11 uh, Level 11, 11, yeah, because it was on the 11th floor. And there we worked together and, and, and made a strategy one page. But what was the situation? Why did you uh, feel that, that now I, I, I have to, together with my colleagues, put down the strategy on one single page? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, that was a very uh, like interesting journey uh, at Robia. So, so the goal was to create uh, 360 degrees uh, like concepts so you have games you have licensed products you can have animation basically all the different forms of en entertainment but when you start thinking about it it's also a super complex thing how do you how do you tackle it how do you create new ideas what should we be making how how do you how do you structure that uh, it sounds simple uh, but in fact being and creating a creative department it's super super complex and it needs a crystal clear focus and 
I have to say that that we were struggling uh, a bit in the beginning. So it was kind of like we were going to all different directions, and we were like like uh, like happy cows in the in a, in a field, <laughs> like doing all the things that we've ever dreamed of. But soon we realized that that this is not the way way to do it. Where is the focus? What is our goal? We should have like a clear goal. And then we started uh, like collaborating with you, Marcus, and uh, 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 that was a as said before as well, uh, you you saved us. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, that was a lot. Thank you. I'm that, that happy if that happened. Yeah. yeah. It was interesting that, that, that you, uh, did, before we started, Niklas, did you have the feeling that personally that, that you have to be in all the meetings and, 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 and uh, was it, so to say, very tiresome to try to keep it together and make the direction? What do you remember about that situation? Yeah, I would say that uh, not necessarily the, the meetings at that point was the, uh, the the limitation. It was how do we structure the team, and also when creating creative things, uh, how do you make it so that people are super excited about it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need. I, I know that we have been discussing with you a lot about the the the, the point of having a story. Yeah. Yeah, so isn't the, also to create the one pager is, is really also to create the story? It is, yeah, it is. How would you like to comment that one? Uh, I would say that that is a, yeah, it is the strategy. Uh, well, well, first of all, you should have a like clear vision. Yeah. What is your goal that I call mission? Uh, <laughs> I've taken it from you. And then uh, when you package that, you take all your values, everything together, that's your story, and it, it should be a story that unites people. Yeah, and you have the same like direction where you're going, and if that is missing, people get like, confused, or, so, if, okay. or if the story isn't something that they are like fully behind, they kind of like they they get on board, but then they I don't know, uh, you don't get anything out of it. Yeah, and then the the skill is really how to get the people to feel. Uh, that they are part of the story. I mean, it's the whole involvement process. So let's talk about that a moment. How did you do it then? <laughs> well, uh, like a background information that we ended up, uh, that we wanted to have a like super fast pace. And we wanted to create 400 ideas on a yearly basis. Like 400 the, game ideas. Yeah. Game, game ideas. And you had this game book, I remember, with one page was one idea. <laughs> yeah, and, and we spent a lot of time, when the, the vision and the mission was crystallized, uh, we realized that we want to have a lot of ideas, and then out of those best ideas, we could drill down to the best idea. So how do we know that this idea is the best if we don't have enough volume? And then the problem was, okay, how do we, how do we create a lot of volume? And, and people, they were like super excited to create that. And, and the team size was super small. It was again, 10 to 12 people actually. Yeah. Uh, and then they were excited in, in the beginning, but then soon I realized that uh, they were more excited about their own projects. They were able to do with their 10% time. And so we had this kind of rule that 10% of your, of your time you could spend with your own ideas. And okay. I was talking that, that, that hey, this is the R&D <laughs> department. Why aren't you excited about this? And then again, we needed to drill down in, into the strategy one page. That how do we... Okay. This was, Niklas, this is an eye-opener for me now because yeah. that means that it was really to create the enthusiasm for the main road, for the main track. Yeah. But they were more interested about the side road. Okay. That, and I've selected that side road elements back to the to the main road and then when having those like strategic discussions around the one pager uh i realized that the that the thing was that that why it wasn't like successful because i was deciding too much how to do it i was dictating too many rules uh and what i needed to do is that i needed to give uh, the decision power back to the team and kind of like step back a bit trust them let them make their own mistakes oh. and then make it better. And, uh, and, and, and I would say that uh, it was, was it successful level 11 at Rovio? Partly, 
uh, but we had this missing piece. And the missing piece was that we weren't uh, able or we didn't launch those products on the market. So basically the feedback loop was missing completely. So we were doing like great in, in innovations, uh, but it was kind of like, that was it catered for the market was decided by us. Yeah, so, so the customer, customer feedback, yeah, customer it, feedback loop, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah play, up, play yeah. up. And, and uh, uh, I learned a lot, but kind of, it, it, like, retrospectively, uh, I should have done it better. So, uh, we had a, we generated so many different ideas, but then we didn't release that many products in the end. Uh, but then, but then what, what happened, uh, I also uh, was part of founding a company called Lightyear uh, that was focused in learning games. Uh, and we weren't able to do it <laughs> again. And we needed to uh, make a like, big strategic shift to a direction that we can make business because otherwise uh, we were we would run out of money. Yeah. Uh, and then they went back to casual games, like hyper casual games. And I had one of my, uh, or one of the uh, level 11 founders was part of level, uh, sorry. So one of the founders level, level 11 was also establishing like near. Yeah. Uh, and he actually took those processes that we designed back then. And also the strategy that we had, so he took that model back to Lightyear and uh, they decided that they're going to get the feedback loop to work. Yeah. So, so they are making like fast paced games. They could actually create a game, launch it in, in, in one month. And also when we have analytics inside the game, you can, you can get kind of like how people are playing it. So yeah. now they have that loop. So from day one to day 30, they can uh, design, like, decide what kind of game they want to make until they, that is launched and they will get all the analytics in and, they, and that cycle is like super, super short at, at the moment. And now I feel that the missing piece is there. And now it's actually rocking. Wow. Yeah, and uh, that's fantastic to have a super fast customer feedback, feedback loop. And you also mentioned the analysis, and the analysis is too slow. Let's talk about a little bit about that. Yeah. So I was running a, a game at Rovio uh, 2017. Uh, so I was the, <coughs> uh, the product manager or leading the, 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 the team and development. And uh, typically when I had a question, uh, I would then go to a uh, like business analyst. Yeah. Uh, I want to find the answer to the to this question so could you please and go and find it out and typically it took uh from 30 minutes to two days okay depending how complex the the question was and and if they had some other projects then i needed to wait and then when i got the answer i was like oh i kind of like the answer but it wasn't exactly what i was looking looking for so could you tweak it a bit? And then again, I just waited another 30 minutes to two days. And then I just like, at one point I realized that, hey, this is like way too slow. I'm, I'm learning too slowly. Oh boy, <laughs> 30 minutes to two days is too slow customer feedback. I, I love yeah. this. this yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and because my, my dream was that I want to get that down to 15 seconds. Yeah, let me just uh, say that, uh, Niklas, this is the power of the next question. So okay. what I've learned as a consultant also is that the power of the right questions is, is the very good because it's challenged the whole thing. Yeah. But, but were you able to solve this, this, uh, this challenge of the fast loop? Were you able to get it faster or is that just a kind of need that is still unfulfilled? Yeah, so that, that was the, the goal. How do I get down to 15 seconds and <laughs> and when, when, you, when you start with a new project so you have too much data you have big data like it, it's so much that that your head explodes but actually uh it doesn't matter uh 
because you have to come up with the first question and because that will lead to the next one and to the next one to the next one and to the next one. Yeah, so the amount of data is not the problem, it's the, it's the question that is really the challenge. Yeah, but yeah the question and that you can actually get the answer. So, so you have to have both. Yeah, and yeah, of course. When you have the question and you have the answer, then you can start kind of like analyzing it. Okay, yeah. what does it mean for you? Yeah. And then you, you will make the best kind of like solution towards that to solve it. Niklas, let's still go back to, to the strategy. I know that when we were preparing this discussion, you mentioned that, that I mean, mission and vision, there are things that doesn't change so fast. For, and you said that every game should really have a one-pager, strategy one-pager. So let's a little bit talk about this, that what is stable in the business and where should you have the agility? Yeah. Well, when you make a game, uh, and basically, I would, I would describe a game as a small startup because you have all the elements. You have, you have to create a product, you have to market it, and, and because it's free to play, it's a service, not just a standalone like game. It's a service that, you, that, that we want to make for, for the users. So all the designers, programmers, everybody, they need to, to know what is kind of like the pulse of the market. So it is a startup. And because of that, you need to crystallize what you want to make. You have to have a vision. You have to have a mission. So basically, the vision could be that, uh, as we saw when we made the first game, that people want to play multiplayer games. People want to get connected. That was the vision, yeah. Yeah. And, and what, is, what is our mission? Well, it's that very simple, simplistic game catered for that vision. Yeah. And then the question is, okay, how do you do it? Well, we need to have a smartphone that is capable of like, communicating from one person to another. Yeah. And back, back in those days, uh, that, that wasn't even possible to do. Yeah. It was an undocumented feature that we were able to kind of like... Yeah, there was no technology yet. Yeah. No, no. So we needed to create it. Uh, and when you go forward with your game, uh, typically, the vision and the mission, it doesn't change. But there are moments, especially when you are in new frontiers. So you don't know exactly how you should do it. And then when you get learnings from the market, it might be that actually this vision and the mission combination wasn't viable. We need to change it. And that yeah, then you are going to a completely another thing, yeah. Yeah, so then, then we need to stop. And that is kind of like, it, I wouldn't call it crisis, but it's a a moment that you really need to like stop and think. So and what do you believe, Niklas, about the point that, that I have been talking about, that, that there is no linear strategy any, anymore, that it should be like a sector? Yeah. But you are now mentioning that if this uh, path inside this sector doesn't rock, then we have to change the sector. But that's yeah. a completely new, new game then. Yeah. yeah. It, but do you believe, what do you think about this sector idea? <laughs> I like that uh, mental image that I'm getting out of it because uh, if you if you change your sector, then that is a big thing. It's kind of like a crisis for that particular product. You need to pivot it then, and it means that you need to think your strategy and your vision from from the get go again. Yeah. But then, when you think about it, uh, do you have uh, do you know how to, how to get there from uh, from the present moment to the vision or closer to the vision. Uh, I think that is always a kind of like, you, you will take detours. Yeah, because yeah. You need to have those kind of like, uh, like, like many, many millions of questions and yeah. getting answers to those because it's, it's kind of like part of the, the journey. It's a learning process. Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't have a crystal ball how to do it. No, no, it's, it's, I, I, I like the metaphor of a sailing boat, that every day you have to make a question, where does the wind come today, you know? Yeah. And, There's yeah. a new wind, it's rainy, yeah. it's snowy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you and, have and, to. In, and in a way, if you think about it, uh, you have those storms coming from the team itself, they have a bad day, Yeah. a uh, kid hasn't been sleeping that, that well, <laughs> and if you, you will see that in the, in the next morning yeah. in your colleagues, or it might be that the... Uh, you have this amazing idea and then there's a, a competitor doing it. So then the question is that, okay, 
will you make it even better? Will you take the next step, or do you need to pivot your sector again? Yeah, and do you take the same route as the as the competing competing sailing boat, or do you try yeah. to find a place where you have better wind? So differentiation is very important. Mm-hmm. Niklas, I, I'm I'm very impressed about your thinking and all the all the things you are saying. So let 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 us conclude this session. I could go on for hours with you. Yeah, well. Because your stories are so fascinating, but but uh, your advice to our viewers now they are probably SME companies, smaller companies. Maybe we have a big ones also mm-hmm. here. But what is your learning now about strategy and, and how to work with that? What would yeah. you say? I would say that uh, because we were ne- nearly killed uh, during the first six years, and I would say that my first advice would be that. Don't panic, pause for a while, stop for a while, and just think about what is the most important thing for you. Most and, 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 and typically, it's not, uh, it might take a while until you find it. So you will have like too many ideas around you. So how do you basically eliminate the irrelevant things? And what is the core of the core? And when you find that, my next thing is double down on it. Don't, yeah, yeah. yeah, double down on it, focus on it. Don't do too many things at the same time. Because at least me, I'm so bad in multitasking. Perhaps because I'm, I'm a, a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't multitask. But I've, I have this excuse to myself that but when I do that one thing, I do it super well. <laughs> wow. Niklas Head, the founder of Ravio. Thank you, Niklas, for this. I think that you gave a lot of inspiration and, and, and some kind of uh, belief and trust in the future. And, and many of the sentences that you said, I think they had the whole philosophy. All the, that part, for instance, where you talk, talk about you have to trust your people and not do the all, all things yourself, that you have to have yeah. this visionary story. That, that, uh, that goes through. I think those are advice that are super valuable. Yeah. Thank you, Niklas, so much. And, and, and let's continue the discussion and create a better world. Thank cool. you, Niklas. Thanks, Marcos. Yeah. Pleasure.